And with everyone buckling up for the fourth quarter of 2024, here are a couple of interesting updates within the CG community that has to do with releases of amazing softwares that you may want to know about. Now most of these did fly under the radar and today we're going to simply talk about them and with that said, let's dive right into it. The folks at Adobe has just recently unveiled the Firefly Video model, which was promised some time ago. This new model brings generative AI to Adobe's Premiere Pro and possibly After Effects, as it comes with some interesting possibilities for generating additional audio or video frames on existing video clips. Editors will be able to generate brand new video clips right inside of Premiere Pro, as this requires a simple text prompt to get this generating, or you can simply use a reference image to generate the video that you want. Of course, we've seen several tools like Runway create some interesting generation of videos but the folks at Adobe seems to be extending the capabilities of this tool and also trying out new ways of extending the video generation. I do think that there are several parts that this might come in handy, for example generating effects elements like fire, smoke, dust and also some motion graphics related stuff. Those are the places where I kind of think that these might come in handy as simulating these and actually caching or rendering them would take a ton of time but if it can be easily generated by guidance then I think that would make sense. The text to video from the folks at Adobe promise to also come with some additional camera movement like zoom extend and there's also some updates to the time zone condition that deals with AI models they were trained to create these following the previous backlash that they had sometime earlier this year. The folks at Maxon has just recently released ZBrush for iPad, and this is one of the most anticipated apps for this year, as ZBrush for iPad brings with it all of the functionalities of the traditional desktop version of ZBrush, including over 200 plus brushes and a ton of tools that currently exist with the desktop version of ZBrush. ZBrush for iPad has a very intuitive user interface, and the way it performs is pretty similar to what you've got with the desktop version. Built to use the Apple Pencil and a good number of gestures that can simply allow new users and also professionals to get sculpting instantly, as this leverages on Apple's M series chip to deliver a high performance and interesting sculpting experience. Currently, there's a free feature limited version and also a paid subscription version, and if you do own a Maxon One subscription, you would also be able to have access to ZBrush for iPad, and the subscription can either be monthly or yearly. And speaking about the folks at Maxon, they've also recently released Cinema 4D 2025. And Cinema 4D 2025.0 comes with some interesting updates as it adds a field driver tag for procedural animation which makes it super possible to control parameters using field as fields are previously used to control clones created using Cinema 4D's motion graphic toolset but cannot be used to control any other object or tag parameter. There's also a new noise modifier for deforming surfaces, an improvement to spline modeling, the follow-up spline modifier, the particles modifier, the map modifier, and the spin modifier now has a redesign. There's also the align to surface, look spin, and turn modifiers as well. Cinema 4D 2025 also comes with it some interesting updates to color management and also live linking with Unreal Engine. Cinema 4D 2025.0 continues to push its pyro particle and rigid body simulation, as the pyro simulation itself for simulating fire smokes gets a new sparse surface and sparse volume emission type and the rigid body simulation now supports forced object, making it possible to have rigid bodies attracting and repelling neighboring object. Additionally, Maxon has also released Redshift 2025.0. This GPU renderer comes with some improvements that will accelerate how you render with it, as Redshift adopts the yearly naming versus the conventional naming it was under, which was Redshift 3.6.05 or Redshift 3.7. Comes with some interesting updates to the caustic system, which now replicates the patterns generated when light gets refracted by curved surfaces, in particular, transparent materials like water and also glass. The non-photorealistic rendering system introduced in Redshift 3.6 also gets some interesting update, making it possible to assign patterns and color gradients to tune outlines, pen and pencil modes to give outlines a more hand-drawn look. Other interesting changes include the new volume depth AOV, which generates a Z-depth pass but is designed specifically for VDB volumes like cloud and smoke. There's also the sprite mode which now accepts procedural shaders as input, making it possible for you to generate stencil textures procedurally rather than having to load an external texture. So whether you're working with Katana, Houdini, Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender or any other tool that supports Redshift, you can now take advantage of all of these cool features and start doing some high photorealistic rendering with Redshift. 
The folks at Epic Games have just recently announced the Epic Game Design Professional Certificate course that you can now get started with on Coursera. So if you've always wanted to learn Unreal Engine, then this might just be the time for you. With the demand for Unreal Engine skills to be predicted to grow over 138% globally in the next coming decade, now seems to be the perfect time for you to start building your dreams and becoming a game developer or possibly learn how to work with Unreal Engine and get this going. As this course is for free to enroll with the option to complete the professional certification assessment at an additional cost. The course itself is currently available only in English and will be available in 10 additional languages later in the month, as this comprises of 10 plus hours of hands-on training with 90 hours plus of content. With the professional 8 series courses ranging from introduction to game design all the way to Unreal Engine Fundamentals, which is about 21 hours, then you've got the fundamental of level design with Unreal Engine, blueprint scripting, visual development and audio design in games, user interface in game design, user experience in game design, and finally, game development and prototyping. So if you'd like to see more details about the courses, then you might also want to consider looking at this page. Coursera is definitely another amazing place that you can learn tons of cool stuff and it's quite interesting to see that the folks at Epic Games have now partnered with the folks at Coursera to deliver the Epic Games Game Design Professional course that will issue you a certificate once you're done. Additionally, for those looking for assets that they can work with, right now, there are some assets that are currently available right here on Humble Bundle. So if you'd like to get all of these Epic Games assets, then you can simply get this for a total steal. Getting all of this asset that comes with both low poly and nanite enabled stuff will be costing about 1493 euros but at this point you can get this for a steal of 28.08 or 23.08. And the same thing of course can be said for every other thing here that includes the game creator bundle, the game art in Blender for those who would like to learn how to get started with working with Blender alongside several tools that exist in Blender to create VFX stuff game assets and also working with procedural nodes inside of Blender all the way to learning how to work with Godot just in case you like to work with an open source tool that will get you going. And speaking about things that you can get from the folks at Humble Bundle, the folks at Blender Market have partnered with Humble Bundle to bring Blender Market Best of 2024. Believe me when I say that this is the most professional collection I have seen for Blender artists as it literally covers every single thing a Blender artist would literally need. If you're thinking about hard surface modeling, then you've got hard ups, you can simply come through and grab this. You can also get the KidOps 3 Pro, which is really cool. The Sci-Fi Flex version 2 is also an amazing one. And you've also got, you know, the Spook, which is also another interesting one as well. And you can grab it. For those who are looking for stuff that they can use for oceans and stuff, the physical open waters from the folks at Physical Starlight and Atmosphere have actually made this one available. And you can also get the Real Cloud, which is also really cool. The Underwater Caustics is also available. And you can get this nice one from Smiles, which is also right here. So tons of cool things are literally available for you to grab. So whether you're thinking about generating characters, doing some flip fluid simulation, or maybe trying to create amazing terrains, or possibly you want to do some retopology, maybe you need some cars, then you can find all of these at a massive steal. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Blender Market for partnering with the folks at Humble Bundle to bring us all of this. Marmoset 2 Bag version 5 is now open for everyone to download, test out and start exploring all of the real-time rendering and look depth features that now comes with this. This is kind of described as a game-changing tool as it sort of adds up a good number of features that lots of artists have been looking for. And this includes support for UDM workflow, making it super possible for you to be able to create, bake and also render materials by simply using UDIMs. So whether you're coming from Blender or any other tool, you can now simply bake and texture UDIMs right inside of Marmoset 2 bag. It also features a beautiful interactive bevel shader as this automatically bakes as you work with it in real time. So once you start cranking up the shader, this automatically starts mimicking rounded edges and automatically creates corners for your model in real time. This also comes with a beautiful option for you to be able to bake out normal just in case you're working with this. And this is also an option that is available for ambient occlusion and coverture maps as well. 5.0 also introduces support for vector-based texturing workflow, which also includes the vector type. And this is for those who like working with tools for drawing and editing vector shapes right inside of the app. And the hybrid rendering, which is a new mode of rendering, balances between the raster renderers interactive and also the ray tracers image quality. As the hybrid rendering spits out rendering of various light passes, which includes the shadow, GI and reflections, so that they can be independently denoised and the lighting data from previous frames can be reprojected. As this further reduces noise and provides a smoother and a more game engine-like experience.
There's also a brand new groom hair rendering which is also available as this adds realistic head and fall to your characters with groom spline support and the hair shading model. The groom support enables you to be able to import and render hairstyles created with XGen and other softwares that provide tools for authoring grooms. And with Mammoth Set 5, there's a lot of things coming to this. There's a native Apple Silicon support, triplanar materials, procedural sky, clone tools and a whole lot of features are now available. And of course if you like to explore Mammoth Set 5, you can simply go ahead and download it as the 5.0 is publicly available for beta testing. And here's a tool that has given me so much joy and it's called Plasticity. So Plasticity is just this amazing tool for anyone who is thinking about creating highly sophisticated surface modeling with an advanced direct editing tool. Now we're simply going to make a full video about this one sometime, but this is one of those tools that I definitely would suggest go ahead and try it since it offers a 30 days trial with no subscription, it's a one-time purchase and you'll be able to get these for both Windows, Mac and also for Linux. Currently, 2024.2 is now available and this comes with some very interesting updates. Now, plasticity has always updated over time and this is just one of those ones that simply eyes the cake. So there's the square command and square command is an X knob based command that allows you to create various surfaces with explicit control for UV degrees and spans. And there is also the deform command. And with deform command, you can wrap existing solid objects and wire bodies onto regular or irregular surfaces, allowing you to create very complex and yet unique patterns and wrappings. Reverse command is also available and this just simply lets you reverse the direction of the curve and normal direction of the sheet that you're simply making. This will be super useful for those who work with a pipe tool as you can now reverse the direction of the pipe when using the skill option. There are tons of improvement that has to do with the rebuild command, the x knob command, the bridge vertex and curve command, the square command and a ton of other commands right here. So if you like to explore plasticity and maybe you're into making some interesting models, especially if you're a card developer, then you might simply want to come through and download the trial version and start seeing what you can do with it. The folks at Nikki has just recently released Cascadeau 2024.2 and this comes with something that is pretty interesting. As Cascadeau is already known for its AI assisted animation as it brings a lot of physics based animation driven solutions to users and this release adds an interesting feature to move it forward. Cascadeau now comes with a new auto physics filter called separation of motion which now allows for a much more smoother and realistic rotation when a character gets animated. There's also this beautiful auto physics interaction that now allows characters to interact with with others, as the autophysics does calculate all of these, which brings a more true to life and accurate animation. There's also a huge improvement to the scene linking tool and some more impressive improvements to the overall animation tools that exist in Cascadeau alongside some performances as well. Cascadeau now comes with blend shapes as it makes it super easy for animators and artists to adjust facial animations inside of the software. Although the folks at Nikki have also announced that it will be possible to create detailed facial expressions and morph targets for characters but currently this isn't something that you can do with this release. However, if you do have a character that already has a blend shape, you can now control these blend shapes in Cascadeau. DaVinci Resolve 19 and also Fusion 19 are now finally released as they just simply move from beta to the final product. DaVinci Resolve now adds new features to live broadcast editing which also includes a couple of replay systems plus a new AI video editing and audio mixing set of tools. And some of the AI tools include the color slice for precision grading and IntelliTrack for improved object tracking. It also adds a film look creator for cinematic effect with some interesting updates to rotoscoping with a multi-poly tool. As the release of DaVinci Resolve 19.0 is aimed at flexibility for colorists, editors and VFX artists. As within the Fusion page that exists with DaVinci Resolve, these tools also come into play. One of the major features that is now available with the Fusion for DaVinci Resolve includes the support for USD based workflow as the update adds new node for manipulating textures directly in a USD scene without having to edit the source file itself. And this includes the U texture, the U transform, U shader and U normal map. There is also a brand new volume tool that now allows you to import, shade and render volumetric effects like fire and smoke in OpenVDB format. And here's something that is pretty interesting from the folks at Spasil. Now for those who have no idea, Spasil are the same creators of Cozy Blanket and this is spearheaded by the Godot creator and one beautiful developer that we've all come to love from the Blender community, Pablo Dubarro. And they've simply made this multi-purpose art-focused data editor that exists specifically for the iPad. And recently, Uniform has gotten a couple of interesting updates and it is doing even more stuff. As with Uniform, you can be on the exact tool and make your sculpt, your models, 
texture them, bake them, layer them, paint and also render all of this with no additional modes to switch from as every single thing happens on one viewport. This seems to be something that is far fetched but these guys have actually managed to put it together. Uniform version 1.1 introduced the new Geo curve which allowed artists to be able to sculpt stylized hair and at the same time there was a support for surface transparency and also a beautiful option to sculpt and paint simultaneously and with version 1.2 they've simply added the real-time simulation system for deforming geometries and this is super cool just like you have with blender sculpting cloth simulation stuff that is similar to what you've got now Flick 7.0 is now available and this is from the folks at Foundry and this is more like the major update to its story development tool for animation and VFX. This now supports 2D and 3D pre-production workflow as it reintroduces integration with Maya. Some time ago this wasn't available but now we get to see it make a comeback allowing storyboard panels to be used in 3D layout workflow and the update also adds a new API for building custom extensions which enhances metadata systems for production tracking. At the same time there is now an improvement to Photoshop and Premiere Pro plugin as Flix simply takes the strategy of positioning itself as a full pre-production software that offers more flexibility and streamlined collaboration. And if you always wanted to play with sign distance field and probably you like to start creating sign distance field models then the SDF modeler that you can totally get for free right here on each.io is available for you to download and start exploring. This is currently available for both Windows and Mac, so if you're into sign distance field or possibly you'd like to start making 3D SDF models, then this might just be the best place to start as this tool is totally free and fun to work with. So this is it, we're currently testing this whole new thing of making a video compilation of updates and news that you guys probably missed and I would like to know what you guys think about it. We might be making this weekly, you know, maybe bi-weekly or we might simply just make it monthly depending on what the reception would look like as we're simply testing this to see what the community thinks. However, if you guys would like us to explore one specific tool within the set of announcements that have been made, we will love to do that as well. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, until I see you guys in the next one, peace.